What's next, crazy fans? This is Ryan, and I'm back with another video. So today we'll be doing a little bit of a collection tour. One video that I have been wanting to put out for a little while. And yes, I have been absent from YouTube for a good while. But uh, that is pretty much because I've been moving for a good bit. And also trying to, you know, figure out work schedule and what also. It's good to be back, and uh, hopefully I can get this uploaded before too long. But yeah, so we're going to be doing a collection tour video. Now, a lot of things have changed since... Since my last collection video, I've obviously collected a lot more die casts, or a good bit more die cast, And uh, I've gotten set up with all my collection stuff a little bit. Now, I am still in the process of moving from my old apartment to my new apartment. So, um, there are still a few things I need to get hung up and what all. Of course, as some of y'all know that live in a trailer, uh, it is a good bit different when you go to hanging things on the walls in the trailer. You can't quite put as much weight on the walls. So that is one thing that I've been trying to figure out how to do as far as this shelf right here that you're looking at here and uh, a piece of sheet metal and other things of, so, you know, of sort. So uh, yeah, I look forward to doing this and uh, hopefully I can keep on it and try to do this every year as I start to collect more and more die cast. Uh, try to keep you all involved and I do hope to put out a few more videos as well as far as review wise. And uh, yeah, so I appreciate y'all tuning in and uh, we will get this thing started, shall we? All right. All right, so we are going to go ahead and start here in my main diecast uh, store. This is my living room. So I do have a nice little shelf here right here encompassing the TV right here that I watch most of my races on. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to comb through here real quick, and then we are going to start up here in the corner, starting on the left side. So here is the races I've attended, or at least diecast of races that I've attended that got produced in uh, recent years when we kind of started getting to collecting Um you had the program cars in the corner as well from those races again. Uh, starting back, it was kind of starting back in 2015-14 when I started doing uh, collecting, but I didn't pick up the, the program car for the 2015 one, which was Martinsville, uh, that I went to. The Martinsville where Denny Hamlin won, and that die cast was not produced, of course. You know, Denny Hamlin didn't get a lot of die cast produced. But uh, either way, so you see the 2016 Richmond, 2017 Roval, or the 2017 Coca-Cola 600, and the 2018 Roval. So uh, I tried to get a, a program car for the uh, 2019 All-Star Race, but they did not have one. So uh, that was a bit of a bummer. I wasn't able to get that, but I do plan on getting the uh, the one for the 2019 Richmond race that I do plan on going to. That will be the fall race, and if any of you are planning on going to that, be sure to say hi if you do see me. But uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and start uh, looking at this uh, program pamphlet right here that we see, the uh, program book. For the inaugural Roval 400, so glad I went to that race. What a fantastic race that was last year. Uh, such a memorable race. I was rooting for Jimmy Johnson right there at the end, but, man, they made it exciting. So, uh, look right here, Ty Dillon up there in the corner. You got Tyler Dillon, uh, Ty Dillon, Regan Smith, Cole Custer there in silver. It's kind of hard to see it right there beside the Ty, or the uh, Regan Smith autograph. You got William Byron, Ryan Newman, Richard Petty, and Kyle Larson for that. Then we have the 2016, 2017, sorry, Coca-Cola 600, in which I have uh, Denny Hamlin's autograph and Daniel Suarez's autograph. We'll go ahead and look at the uh, die cast right here. We got the uh, 2017 uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. autographed Elite for the, uh, the car that ran for that race, which is pretty cool, especially since I was at that race. I was able to get a nice car of that with an autograph. My first Dale Earnhardt Jr. autograph, so uh, that was pretty special for me. Um, here we see the Carl Edwards 2016 Richmond race version. This car is actually pretty hard to find. I just recently was able to get, get a hold of it for a, a decent price. So I'm super happy to have that in my collection and it has become one of my favorite die casts in the collection. Look at the card right there for the Toyota Owners 400. And, uh, move on to the 2018 Coca-Cola 600, sorry, 2017. Coca-Cola 600, I get my numbers confused sometimes, but the Austin Dillon win, uh, which was a fantastic win as well, first career win, and uh, that is also the last career win that was produced in diecast form for Carl Edwards, so uh, pretty special to have those two there. Um, again, what a fantastic scheme this was, probably one of the best patriotic schemes on track for that that race there, and uh, of course we had the collection card there, Coca-Cola 600 winner. And uh, the race winner sticker and confetti up there in the corner. Then we move on to last year's Roval 400, another fantastic race uh, that I attended. And uh, we have the Ryan Blaney Elite there, 
along with the collection card and the NASCAR Authentics diecast release of that car. What a fantastic race that was. A really, really awesome finish. Again, coming down to Martin Truex and Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson diving out in there and uh, incidentally taking out Martin Truex Jr. And it ends up being Ryan Blaney that got that win. So we'll move on down here to the shelf below. A little bit of uh, Jeff Gordon stuff here. Got an Icon Elite Jeff Gordon for his 2015 scheme. And the, uh, the final career win for J uh, Jeff Gordon here. We have that in the ARC. What a fantastic race version that was. And a fantastic race that was quite memorable. With it being uh, the incident between Joey Logano and Matt Kenseth. That kind of resulted in J Jeff Gordon getting that final win. Of course the win stack card there. And the confetti and winner sticker. Up in the corner we have uh, uh, my only liquid color for uh, Casey Kane. And that NASCAR authentic release as the liquid color there. And uh, Chase Elliott's. First career win in the NASCAR Authentics line as well. And a couple 24 ever cars for both Chase Elliott and William Byron. There, and as we move down here, we have a couple William Byron uh, diecasts here for his rookie season at the Xfinity Series. We have his first career win at Iowa there in the corner. Of course, all these are signed. They're all released in signed forms. But uh, the number nine... Exalta for his first career win. See there, American Ethanol E15 250 winner, first career win. And his, I believe, third career win at Indianapolis. Youngest winner at Indianapolis, I believe. I don't know if that's for the Xfinity Series or overall. I do not remember. And then the Homestead Race version there. What a fantastic scheme that was with the uh, the corner panel. All scraped up and such. That just made for a really, really good race version. I'm glad I had that one as well. And, uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and... That is the first shelf there, and we will move up top to uh, the Jimmy Johnson 7-time. There are a couple haulers up here. I still do not have a couple haulers out. Uh, they are still in the closet because, again, I'm moving, finally starting to get these things uh, back up and uh, in order. We have the Jimmy Johnson 7-time and the uh, Chase Elliott rookie season uh, hauler there. We have uh, Chase Briscoe's first career win again at the Roval. This was another race that I attended that Roval weekend. Uh, between the Chase Briscoe and the Ryan Blaney win. Fantastic scheme that is, and fantastic race win. A whole bunch of confetti up top. What a great, great, great die cast that is. We have the decision from the Richmond race that I also attended, again, that uh, Carl Edwards won. So uh, that's pretty cool to have that hauler there. And we have uh, an NHRA die cast that I picked up at the Lionel Racing event. Again, All-Star Weekend. I get that for a pretty good price there. No box, but I uh, cannot complain for $10. Um, so pretty, pretty cool there. We have the uh, Chase Elliott little tin can there that had the two first career uh, wins, the first and second career wins for the Xfinity Series and 164 form on the inside of those. And as we move on, we move on to the, uh, the other glass case right here. Uh, this is kind of the Rainbow Warrior tribute kind of case that I have. Of course, with the uh, Darlington Southern 500 winner in the corner from the NASCAR Authentics line. A couple 164 and I guess 180, 80 something. I think it's what, 80, 187. A uh, hauler there in the corner and a hood. And uh, we have a couple 124s from that as well. And that, the, uh, what is it, Daytona 500 winner for uh, Jeff Gordon as well. We have a uh, 124 scale standard die cast for Jeff Gordon. And then his Bristol run that ran in 2015. Uh, what well, a fantastic scheme that was and looked really, really good under the lights. Unfortunately, did not place the best, but uh, either way, looked really good on track. And then the also uh, ARC William Byron for the uh, Rainbow Warrior as well that he ran last year. And I got that autographed as well at the um, All-Star Race by William Byron. That autograph turned out really, really good. Happy with that. And we'll move on down here to the uh, the final ride. Um, a would-be final ride die cast for... Uh, Three drivers, got uh, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., all raced versions. And uh, a couple things got the hood and the lonely little Matt Kenseth <laughs> final ride there in the corner. I didn't end up picking up the 124 scale of that uh, at the moment, but uh, yeah. So we have the uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. NASCAR Authentics hauler in the back there as well for the final ride and the 164 clean version. And the, uh, the stat card for the uh, Nationwide Series... Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., number three car in the corner. You'll see that in a little while uh, on the display shelf. And uh, the race version for Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s 
ride. What a fantastic scheme that was, and what a fantastic race version it was. With all the tore up side skirts and the other side, there was brushed the wall. But uh, yeah, what a fantastic car that was. The Tony Stewart final ride, one of the more calm final rides that we've had. A little bit less vibrant than the other two, but uh, either way, still a great scheme. I got that as well. And the Jeff Gordon 2015 race version of well, which uh, actually came down to the final four championship cars. And uh, Jeff Gordon was finally able to compete for a championship in his final year, which is really, really cool to see. Uh, and we move on down here. This is kind of like my movie movie tribute kind of cars, as you can kind of see right here, or movie classics or whatever. Got a Knight Rider there, which is pretty cool. If I can get the uh, the focus in, it's kind of hard with the uh, the reflection of the glass right here, and I apologize for that. But we have a kit right here for those classic TV show uh, fans. We have kit 124 scale, have the uh, Pontiac Firebird for the uh, Smokey and the Bandit. Of course, y'all all know this car needs no introduction. Have the uh, 01 General Lee from Dukes of Hazard, and the uh, the classic Batman vehicle here, and a couple other 164 cars as well. Got a couple of the 164 kit and car uh, set there, Back to the Future, and a signed Jason Voorhees by Kane Hodder <laughs> mask there that I have, which is pretty cool. But um, yeah, so that is the first shelf right here. I guess I keep on forgetting about this down here, this little cabinet right here. Again, these are cars that I do want to display, but I do not have the room right now. I hope to get another shelf put up before too long, but for right now, they're staying in here. Um, we have Eric Amarola's nationwide series that is autographed as well as you can see there on the hood just barely but uh yep that is autographed as well by eric amarola got kevin harvick's kansas win uh, for the outback scheme that came in 2016 what a pretty cool card that is i got that from lionel as well and we have william byron's rookie year car so i wanted to get a rookie year for william byron's just like it did for chase elliott it has the rookie stripes on the back that's always kind of cool later on but, uh, and we have this fantastic scheme right here for the decision cars. I think this car looked the best out of the three. And, uh, I think it finished 12th in that race, uh, right behind or, uh, right in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. who finished 13th. And I believe Casey Kane finished fifth, uh, fifth or fourth. I cannot remember. But, uh, yeah, what a fantastic scheme that was. I wish he had run better, but uh, either way, still. We got Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s first career win there as well that came at uh, Talladega. And we have a Jeff Gordon 2014 uh, Chevrolet for uh, AARP and Drive to End Hunger. And then we have a dual autographed uh, Bubba Wallace Daytona race version. That is a pretty awesome, awesome car. It has a lot of good damage on the side of it. And I uh, got Bubba's autograph as well at the All-Star Race and Richard Petty's. Then we have Clint Boyer's autographed uh, nationwide championship that came in, what was it, 2004? I cannot remember, 2008, I believe, but uh, still a fantastic looking die cast, that is. And we have Jimmy Johnson's Homestead uh, car. Unfortunately, there was no race version made of this car. I'm still a little bit disappointed about that, but even still, what a fantastic car that was. And uh, that is also in the Elite. So we will move on to uh, my room. And uh, I guess we can stop by the spare bedroom right here real quick and see the, uh, the setup that I have for uh, whenever I do some racing games. I have Gran Turismo 5 loaded up in there right now. I'm kind of going through that campaign. That's a great game, by the way. Uh, for PlayStation 3 exclusive, I got the racing wheel there set up. And, uh, and what all? We'll move on to my bedroom. So... This right here is my bedroom. I have the uh, the case right there and what all. Again, this is the uh, program for the All-Star Race. I got a couple autographs on there. Um, I got Kyle Busch, and I got Kurt Busch, uh, Daniel Hemrick, and Clint Boyer. So that's pretty cool to have that. I always try to get one of these as soon as I go to the track and carry that wherever I go around the track because you never know who you're going to run across, and uh, it's always good to have those. And then we'll go through this. 124 scale die cast shelf of course has 21 cars in it we'll start out here with uh, chase elliott's first career nationwide series win at texas what a great race version that was just just a fantastic car and i'm glad i got this i got it off of amazon i believe for a really really good price i think I got it for like 40 something bucks 
Uh, really good now because this die cast has also gone up in value. Always good to hear. <laughs> and then his uh, 2015 Richmond win, which is a fantastic looking die cast as well. Of course, missing the rear side or the passenger side window with a little bit of scrape on the side. Uh, added a lot of character for this car. And then his number 25 rookie car that he also ran in 2015. This car first ran at Martinsville, um, in which I got to see. Unfortunately, I didn't have a whole lot of pictures from that race um, of this car at all. I think I had it on my iPod. When I when I had my iPod, I took all the pictures for it. And unfortunately, I think the iPod broke <laughs> or finally crashed out after like 10 years. But uh, yeah, and then we have the number 23 Allegiant Chase Elliott car that he won at Martinsville in. I think that was, what, 2016 or 17? I cannot remember. But, uh, yeah, what a fantastic car that was. It was a pretty good race. Has a little bit of rear damage there in the corner. And uh, Chase Elliott's rookie car uh, for his first year in 2016. Of course, again, has the rookie stripes on the back. Again, always kind of cool to have that. As well as the rookie stripes on the back of the 25 car as well. And uh, we move on to his 2017 uh, Daytona dual win. Now this car was pretty clean other than the uh, two scrapes there on the side from a little bit of donut uh, given to him during the duel. But uh, yeah, another fantastic looking car and a car that I'm glad to have. I always like to have those, those cars. Even if it's a dual one, it doesn't have a whole lot of character to it. It's always cool to have those cars other than the uh, the standard paint scheme in my opinion. I always like to have something that's just a little bit more more historical or whatever. And also, there's more of a chance of the paint scheme being right. For example, with the uh, 2018 Daytona Dual Win, in which this one uh, is also very clean, but they also got the the paint scheme more or less right on this one, other than the standard, which was pretty horrific, if you ask me. <laughs> uh, there were a lot of things wrong with that diecast. But yeah, another another clean scheme. Uh, his second Daytona Dual twice in a row. So well, although that one was the first first Daytona Dual, and I believe this was the second. And then moving on to his. Uh, Watkins Glen win again in the Elite, uh, as well as this one, which was an Elite. But you move on to the uh, 2019, sorry, 2018, uh, Chase Elliott Sun Energy one. What a fantastic looking scheme this was. I got to see this Sun Energy scheme at uh, Charlotte for the Roval, and I tell you, it, it just looks fantastic in person. Looks good on a diecast and looks good in person. I think Lionel Racing really did actually nail the color of this car. Um, surprisingly, I think they got it pretty close. Uh, there were a couple of issues with it early on. If you see the uh, the prototypes for it, it was way off. But I'm glad Lionel Racing finally got it right and uh, brought this car to life with that paint scheme. Got the uh, nice rims right there. Could be a little bit better, but either way, I think they still got it pretty good. And we'll move on to, actually, we'll look at the back right there. Look at the, uh, the little bump from Jimmy. The Jim John bump, if you can say it. <laughs> but uh, Chase Elliott's uh, Dover win, which is uh, another fantastic win. His second career win. Uh... At Hendrick Motorsports in the number nine car. And uh, good amount of confetti on this, which is also kind of nice. A little bit of damage as well. Such a fantastic finish. And uh, again, also in the Elite. And I'm certainly waiting for that Kansas win. Should be out in a couple days. Uh, unfortunately, I'll be on a trip in a couple days. So uh, I won't be able to get it in the mail. I'll probably have to have my mail stopped. Um, so I don't get it stolen off the front porch or something like that, you know. But uh, we have Daniel Hunter Jr.'s. Um, nationwide series win in 2010 that I came at Daytona. What a fantastic win that was. And an awesome paint scheme as well. I mean, for him to race uh, his father's colors and uh, number and to go to the win at that race, it was just awesome, awesome to see. But uh, yeah, this is, of course, you know, like I said, the race version. So you had the little bit of dirt there in the front. This is a car that I've been wanting to get for a while, and I was finally able to obtain it uh, for a pretty decent price. Um, as decent as you could be for that car, I guess you could say. And we have uh, Jimmy Johnson's Dover win from, I believe, 2014. This is also an elite, but um, also a very awesome car. I got it for a pretty good price on eBay, and uh, that's the main reason why I picked it up. But, uh, yeah. And then we can move on to Jimmy Johnson's currently final win. Again, currently. He hasn't been running the best right now. But, uh, yeah, hopefully Jimmy Johnson gets another win. At least this is the final win with Lowe's on the side of the car, as far as we know right now. Unless Lowe's, for some odd reason, decides to come back for a race or two. But uh, currently, this is a final race win for Lowe's. So that's pretty cool to have there as well. The uh, 2016 Dover win. And uh, yeah, we'll move on to the uh, Daytona 500 wins that I have. We have Dale Hurt Jr. with his uh, 2014 Daytona 500 win. 
10 years after his first Daytona 500 win, which was pretty cool. But uh, this is a pretty awesome paint scheme as well. This car can actually be found at the Hendrick Motorsports Mo Museum up in Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte and Concord in uh, North Carolina. I've been there a couple times and I've been able to see this car in person, which is pretty cool. They have. They also have Chase Elliott's uh, first career win up there and uh, so forth. But it's, it's awesome to have uh, Hendrick Motorsports do stuff like that where they have the cars that you can go up there and see. But uh, yeah, we'll move on to the uh, 2016 uh, Daytona 500 win. Um, I believe, yeah, 2016 Daytona 500 win for Denny Hamlin. Uh, this one is also autographed by Denny Hamlin as well. So that's pretty cool to have. Uh, and again, another pretty good Daytona 500 uh, race. Has a little bit of a donut on the side. But uh, this was uh, D Denny Hamlin's first Daytona 500 win. Of course, he got his second Daytona 500 win uh, this last year in uh, 2019. So I also have that die cast on pre-order and ready to come in. So uh, hopefully that'll get it before too long. Uh, looks like it'll be pretty good. And then we have the uh, 2017 uh, Daytona 500 win for Kurt Busch. Again, another fantastic looking car. One of the most iconic uh, Daytona race versions we've had. I mean, with the grass on the hood and the uh, the side, the scrape on the other side here, and then the uh, the nice little tire rub there on the side. It just made a fantastic looking diecast. Unfortunately, they could only put it on a base which uh, a lot of people were a bit disappointed about, but uh, I didn't really mind it a whole lot. Um, but really just another fantastic looking die cast. I'm glad I got that one as well. Move on to uh, last year's Daytona 500 winner, Austin Dillon, with his race version. Of course, that is also an elite uh, for the 2019 uh, releases or whatever, 2018-2019 releases, um, where they changed the elites. So uh, again, another, another nice looking Daytona 500 car. Move on to the uh, Homestead race versions. We have Jimmy Johnson's 2016 uh, championship car. Again, another very nice car uh, that I'm super glad to have in my collection. Not exactly the most accurate with the uh, the bottom half of the car, but still a very, very nice looking car that I'm glad to have. Earned a seventh championship, 83rd career win. Uh, so very, very nice. Move on to Martin Truex Jr.'s first career uh, championship that came in uh, 2017, I believe. Um, again, I get these numbers mixed up. Years just kind of fly by, and you kind of lose track of it at times. But again, a very, very nice looking scheme with the uh, quarter panel that's been all torn out. One of the most torn out quarter panels we've had in a die cast, which is pretty cool. But, uh, yep, move on to a first career win, Ryan Blaney's first career win that came at Pocono in 2016, I believe. And uh, what a great race version that was as well. And uh, I'm glad I have that one too. Got his first career win and his second career win in diecast form. Then we have the Bristol Sweep car. Of course, I did not get this in the uh, the Bristol Sweep. I got this as an individual car. But uh, a very, very nice looking car. Confetti loaded and uh, pretty cool to have. Uh, pretty historical as well to get that. And I got that for a pretty good price as well. So a uh, very, very nice. That was my first Kyle Busch diecast that I got. And uh, I'm very, very happy with it. So we'll move on again, once again, to uh, Kyle Busch's number 18 Skittle Chicagoland win. What a great finish that was, and uh, a great die cast that Lionel did. Looks pretty good. I got that also in the Elite as well. Uh, picked that up at the Lionel Racing event. Has the uh, blown out tires and blown out fenders and all. But uh, yeah, another fantastic die cast done by Lionel. And uh, we have a little truck there. <laughs> and um, got a couple pictures here that I just kind of pulled out. Um... A picture there of me and my father uh, as we went to go see uh, Richard Petty at his museum up there um, in Randleman County, North Carolina. And also another autographed picture by Richard Petty. I do have another sign uh, signed by Richard Petty, the STP sign, which is also kind of cool. But um, yeah, we'll move on to the other wall right here. And uh, you can kind of see the, uh, the quarter panel that I have of Chase Elliott that I got from uh, the Hendrick Motorsports store. I believe this was from Martinsville. As you can see right there, Martinsville 7 or 326 2018. So uh a pretty cool car. Has a lot of damage on the side, has a lot of character to it, which I always like in a, a car. I kind of put the uh, the winter sticker right there on the corner for uh, this little magnet one that we got from Lionel. Uh but I put that on there for uh his career win that he got at Talladega this year, so I kinda you know, kind of keep tallies of that. It's kind of cool to have those little things. You can kind of stick one on there when your driver gets a win. But uh, 
Yep, so we have two t-shirts that I've gotten in a hat. Uh, one for Chase that I usually wear at the races, and then uh, the other one for first, his first career win uh, that I've kind of had and kind of hung on to. Hadn't really worn it, but uh, another very, very nice shirt for his first career win that we got. So, um, yep, and we'll move on to the top here. I just have a few die casts, just kind of 164s chilling up here on the ledge, and um, most of y'all would recognize those you got the first career win and the second career win third career win at kansas again another fantastic looking car that i look forward to getting uh and the 124 scale uh, jimmy johnson's fontana homestead and kyle larson's first career win at michigan and another michigan win so yeah i guess that is pretty much it there's one more thing that i've kind of forgotten to uh show you all as we move on in here i also do have a tire that i got from henry motorsports again uh this one i believe ran at richmond uh last year for uh, the April race, so I got that and I turned it into a, a, a little table, a little coffee table for the side of the couch. So a, a good little idea for people who, uh, you know, would like to have a cool man cave kind of coffee table. It's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, appreciate y'all watching and uh, I hope y'all will tune into future videos if I decide to do them. And uh, this is Ryan and I in signing out. Take care, guys.